Hello, and welcome to our session on transistor implementations of digital logic circuits. In the digital world, when implementing logic gates, transistors are usually modeled in one of two possible states or operating modes. The first is modeled as a switch that is turned on, where the transistor acts like and is modeled like a short circuit. The second is when the switch is off and the transistor acts and is modeled as an open circuit. There are many possibilities for implementing these switches and devices operating as switches to turn them into logic gates, but there are two major topologies for doing so. The first is the active pull-down, passive pull-up, and the second is active pull-down, active pull-up. But what do these terms mean? Well, an active pull-down means that we actively force an output to a hard zero, implying that there's a direct or short circuit connection between the output node and ground or zero volts. An active pull-up is the opposite. The device actively connects via a short circuit or close to a short circuit an output of a logic gate to a hard one or the power supply. In contrast, a passive pull-up does not in involve a wire or short circuit connection between the output and the power supply. Instead, the output reaches a value of 1 or close to the power supply by virtue of the fact that nothing is opposing it, and eventually it reaches that power supply value, which in digital terms is a 1. Let's take a look at how this works. By far the most common transistor used in the world today in integrated circuits and digital logic is the N-type metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. The field effect transistor part of that very long name refers to the fact that the input is not electrically connected to the rest of the transistor, meaning that the input current is actually zero, which saves quite a bit in power. Now the transistor itself, when used in digital logic gates, is used in an active pull-down mode, and that's a function of the device physics or the limitations of the transistor. It's best suited to pulling down an output node to zero, rather than being involved in pulling the output node up to the power supply or to a one value. And the NMOS transistor, when it operates as a switch, becomes a short circuit when the input value to the transistor is high, or a 1. In that case, the output nodes of the transistor are connected via a wire and the transistor acts like a short circuit or a switch in the on position. In contrast, when the input is a low or close to 0 volts, the transistor acts like an open circuit, conducting no current, and is modeled as such at the two output nodes of the transistor. So the NMOS transistor can be used either as an on switch, as shown here in the middle block, or as an off switch, as shown here in the rightmost block. The NMOS transistor has a complementary device in the PMOS transistor, which serves as an active pull-up device in contrast to NMOS, which acts as an active pull-down device in digital logic circuits. The PMOS device has a symbol that's very similar to the NMOS transistor, with the exception of the bubble here at the input to the gate of the PMOS transistor. This indicates that the impact of the PMOS input is opposite or complementary to that of the NMOS. Translated, that means that in contrast to NMOS, when a low input produces an open circuit, a low input into a PMOS transistor turns the switch on and results in a short circuit at the output nodes of the transistor. In contrast, when the input is high, the output of the transistor acts like an open circuit or an open switch. And in this way, the actions of the PMOS transistor complement those of the NMOS transistor, such that when the an NMOS transistor is a short circuit because the input is high, the corresponding PMOS transistor would then be an open circuit and vice versa. Sometimes 
Passive pull-up or passive pull-down devices can be useful in digital logic circuits and other integrated circuit topologies. And what passive means, here shown with the most common passive element, the resistor, is that the output node doesn't get pulled to the power supply as shown here in the passive pull-up resistor. But instead, when there's no opposing force, in other words, no opposing connection to ground or to zero volts, the output will naturally go to VDD in this pull-up case because there's no current flowing through the transistor since there's an open circuit at the bottom of the resistor. So here the input current is equal to zero, and then simply by Ohm's law, out is equal to the power supply minus the voltage drop across the resistor, and in this case the current zero because there's an open circuit involved in this pull-up process, so the output gravitates towards VDD, which in digital terms is just equal to a 1. Here on the right we see the resistor shown in pull-down mode, the same basic concept when the output node isn't connected to anything, the current through the resistor is zero, and therefore the output because there's no current flowing through the resistor, the output has to have the same voltage as the opposite side of the resistor, or equal to zero volts, and that equals a digital zero. So whether using passive pull-up or active pull-up, or passive pull-down or active pull-down devices, we can make digital circuits using these transistors and resistors to perform the functions that we've talked about in previous sessions. Let's take a look at the simplest of the transistor level implementations and the simplest of the digital logic circuits, the inverter. Here we show an inverter constructed with a passive pull-up device, the resistor, and an active pull-down device, the NMOS transistor. And the way this inverter works, we'll take a look at here in just a moment. We'll first take a look at the case where the input is equal to zero. Now this device is an NMOS transistor, so an input voltage of zero serves to turn the transistor into an open circuit, and what we have left is a circuit that looks like this. So we now replace the NMOS transistor with an open circuit because the input is zero volts, and the output is now pulled up to the power supply, called VDD, and becomes a 1 in digital terms, indicating that its voltage value is near the power supply. In the opposing case, when the input to the NMOS transistor is equal to a 1, or in voltage terms is close to the power supply, now the NMOS transistor will turn into a short circuit. And when we do that, the output is directly connected to ground and becomes a digital zero. Now notice in this situation, we still have current flowing through the transistor, even when it's in its steady state. Current, although the output is directly connected to zero and therefore gravitates towards zero volts rather than VDD, the resistor still makes a connection between VDD and zero, which can result in considerable power dissipation and is a disadvantage of this type of implementation of the inverter. But overall, we've looked at the two different cases for the inverter here, where the input is zero or the input is one, and found that as expected, the output is the inverse of the input voltage, and we have indeed built an inverter. We can also build an inverter using active pull-up and active pull-down devices. And in this case, the active pull-up device will be a PMOS transistor, and the active pull-down device will still be an NMOS transistor. Now when the input is equal to zero, the NMOS transistor, as in the previous inverter, will turn into an open circuit but the PMOS transistor will complement that and turn into a short circuit. And that means now that the output is directly connected to VDD, which results in an output of 
a 1 in digital terms or close to the power supply voltage. In the opposite situation, when the input is 1, the NMOS transistor now turns into a short circuit and the PMOS transistor is modeled as an open circuit. And therefore, by observation, the output goes close to 0 volts or the ground connection and is equal to a digital 0. So once again, we've built an inverter here where the input, when the input is equal to 0, the output is the opposite at 1, and when the input is 1, the output is 0. Now the advantage of CMOS here, when we combine PMOS and NMOS together to make an inverter or any other digital logic gate, is that at steady state, when there are no changes in the input voltage, there's also no current being drawn at the output. And that leads to huge power savings for the CMOS approach as opposed to other approaches for making inverters and other digital logic gates. So what we've taken a look at here is two basic ways of implementing the inverter, the digital logic inverter, using active pull down and either a passive pull up resistor or an active pull-off PMOS transistor. The most common technology in modern logic gate implementation is by far CMOS, where NMOS and PMOS transistors are combined in active pull-down and active pull-up mode to implement various logic functions and also to take advantage of the huge power savings gained by drawing no current when the inputs are not changing or they're at steady state. Overall, CMOS consumes less power and less space than almost all other alternative technologies and for, th for this reason remains extremely attractive for integrated circuit and digital logic implementations. Well, that's all for tra transistor level implementations today. Thanks for joining us as we continue to explore the world of digital logic and circuits, and we hope you'll join us again soon.